thief! No thief! No thief! You are a thief! Jim, I'm in here! In here! Uh, you cannot trick me! Oh, let's be reasonable here. Look, I'm not here to steal anything. Let's talk! back from Asa's office. What's with the suitcases? Well, first, how's Asa? Well, you know how he is. He's trying to act like it's business as usual. He's sitting behind that big desk, but... Uh... He can't concentrate on anything but Clint. I told him I'd roll up my sleeves. I can run Buchanan Enterprises for him. He's going to resist you at first, you know. But please don't give up on him. He needs you more than ever. Well, I'll do what I can. Now, where are you going? We're going up to the cabin. I've always been able to relax there, and I'm kind of hoping that the children and I will be able to well, come to terms with Clint's death and try to figure out some way to go on with our lives. Well, you don't begrudge us that, do you? No, no. I want you to do whatever's going to make you and the children happy, but as far as going up there alone, there's no way. I'm coming with you. She was waiting for the next stage. Well, I guess that Miss Jenny Fletcher just got tired of waiting. And when that kindly family was pulling out of town heading east, she took a seat on the buckboard. And she's headed for St. Louis. Yeah. Maybe if I put the spurs to Maisie, I can catch up with him. I got some unfinished business with Miss Fletcher. Well, I'm very familiar with that kind of business, and um, there's lots of other girls left in town. I'm sure one would strike your fancy once you put down roots. I'm not interested in putting down roots, Blaze. I'm just staying here long enough to get some things settled so I can get back home. Well, if you're getting home depends on Jenny, I'm afraid you're stuck here for good. Rafe, thank you for letting me go through Delilah's files. It's obvious I have a lot of groundwork to do before starting up this company again. But I'm thinking of having an office here in Landview as well as a studio out by the ranch. Gabrielle, would you mind if I left you to look at these files by yourself every time I see Delilah's signature or any photos with her oh, picture? I, I understand. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to drag up painful memories. Sometimes I just don't think. Don't be silly. You're buying the company. It's important to me that you make a go of it. It'll mean that Delilah's work won't have vanished with her. Excuse me. Hey, Steve. Hi, Rafe. Am I interrupting? Uh, no. Steve, what a surprise. Yeah, come on in. Thanks. I didn't expect to see you down here at all. No, I know. I expected to see you back at Landfair over an hour ago. A quick check of the files, I think you said? Yeah, I thought it would just be that. I'm sorry. Then Rafe brought over files and sketches I didn't know existed. So, uh, I'm sorry it took a little too long. Not half as sorry as I am. You know, buying a new business is like building a new house. There are uh, a million unforeseen problems. I'll leave you to it. Rafe, thank you again so much, and I promise I won't let Delilah's dream die. I won't let it. Funny how some dreams are more important than others. Steve, I have already apologized for being late. Yeah, well, it's not about the 60 minutes, Bree. It's about the days coming up. I mean, when you're going to be torn between your studio here and our home in Arizona, that is, if you still consider our ranch your home. You know I do. No, I don't. I want you to tell Rafe that you've changed your mind. That you're going to get rid of this business before it tears our marriage apart completely. <laughs> No, no, not again. No. Hey, Galena, what are you doing? He's a thief. No. I catch him trying to steal the bambino. He's not a thief. Please let him go. Please don't hurt him. He's my friend. Come on, please. Please. Oh, Max, are you all right, honey? He hurt you. Oh, it's my fault. I should have told you about my friend Piccolino. Your friend? 
friend. I'd hate to meet your enemies. Oh, honey, he's here. He's just guarding this precious statue of the Christ child. Isn't that right, Piccolino? See, guard against thieves. I told you I was no thief. You overstuffed lasagna. Shh, don't get him angry. What have I got to lose? I've already seen his good side. Why are you sneaking here, then? The same reason she's here. The lady happens to uh, be he's my... He's my friend, Piccolino. Uh, Max is my friend, and he came here all the way from America to help me find my baby. Isn't that right, Max? You want to tell me what's going on here? Me too. Uh, look, I'll, I'll be really happy to tell you all about this a little later, okay? But would you mind if I just had a, a few minutes alone with my friend? You wouldn't mind that, would you? Tina, oh. if Mother would find out, I've leave my post again. She'd be very angry, maybe, maybe make me leave. Oh, no, no, she won't make you leave here. No, she won't, especially if she doesn't see you. And, and, well, you can do that for your little princess, can't you? You, you treat her with respect. Ah, that's the Piccolino I, I know and love. Ciao. Ah. Yeah. ever since I first yes, saw you in the Mother Superior's office. I have to. Now, what's this about us being friends? Oh, honey, he likes me. I'm his little princess, and I don't want to hurt him, and I certainly don't want to make him jealous. It's a wise decision. 300 pounds of him would be enough to rearrange my face. Oh, man, it's such a beautiful, mm. beautiful mm. face. Mm. Half of me wants to kiss you, the other half wants to wring your neck. Why, what'd I do? What didn't you do? You disguised as a nun, sneaking into a convent? To find my baby. Oh, and what about you, brother Maximilian? What choice did I have, hmm? You want to tell me that? I had to come in here and find you. Now that I've got you, we're getting out of here. Oh, no, we're not. Tina, I don't want an argument about this. If we get arrested, how are you ever going to find Milagro? I'll find him, believe me. Milagro is a lot closer than you might think. Where'd you get that? Piccolino found it. Look, this is proof that these nuns have got a baby hidden away here in the convent. Now, I'm not going to leave until I find out whether or not he's mine. I am pleased that you finally arrived, Signori. Our poor clock has not run in, in over a year. Point us to the clock, and we'll begin the repair. Oh, excellent. I will have one of the sisters escort you to the tower. Madre! I found him. Wandering in the halls. Piccolino left the tower unguarded again. Sister Lucia, we have visitors. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Madre. I'm sorry too, Madre. Forgive me, please. <laughs> Normally, I would chastise you again, Piccolino. But, however, it's just as well. Uh, these gentlemen have to go to repair the clock in the tower. So you would have been in the way. No, Madre, you cannot Stop. let him go up there. Stop, Piccolino, now you are getting me angry. The clock must be repaired for the festival. But, Madre... Shh, basta. You go to the rock garden. Uh, Suor Lucia, per piacere, make sure he clears the area uh, around the grotta, eh? Si, sí, Madre. I am sorry, Signore. He, he is an overgrown child. He, he will not disturb you, I guarantee. Come, I will escort you to the tower myself. Come, come. Bo, you're still in mourning yourself, and you're going to have to take time to readjust to your life here in Landview. I think the last thing you need right now is to spend a few days up in the mountains with me and three small children. Yeah, but those children are my uh, niece and my two nephews, and their mother is someone who I don't think should be alone right now. Bo, I want to be alone right now. I'm going to welcome the solitude. In fact, I... I can't think of anything nicer right now than to build a fire in the fireplace, gather the children up on the sofa, wrap us all up in a blanket and tell 
happy stories about their father till we fall asleep. Vicky, come on. Listen, you're upset just talking about it. Don't tell me you wouldn't be better off with someone there to just help out. Oh, Bo, you are so sweet, but not even you can help me now. My memories of Clint cut two ways, you know. They, they help me, they heal me, and they hurt me. Yeah, well, I guess all I can see right now is the hurt. Yes, right now, here. But maybe up in the mountains, they'll help to heal me. I was thinking earlier about the first time Clint and I went ever, ever went up there together. I had always thought of the mountain cabin as a cozy place, a kind of retreat from the world. He thought it was a wonderful adventure. He made me put on snowshoes. And he dragged me through the deep snow into the absolute deepest part of the woods. We were totally lost. We saw deer, we saw a brown bear and her cubs. And somehow he got us back home again. Vicky. It was so easy then. Now I wonder if I'll ever find my way home. Will I be lost like this forever? Oh, dear, I didn't want to cry. No, no, you go ahead and you cry. You're not going to get any complaints from me. No, I don't want to. The children are coming down in a minute and we're leaving. I'm, oh. not, I'm not going to fight you on this getaway, but you've got to promise me that you're going to stay in touch. You're going to let me know that you're okay up there. I promise. I'll call you because I want to know if you and Asa and everyone else is managing down here. Yeah, well, you don't worry about us. You just take care of those kids. Or you take care of everything else. I'm just doing my bit for the family. Oh, Bo, it's a lot more than your bit. I really don't know how any of us could have gotten through the last few days without you, especially Asa. Please keep an eye on him. Make sure he gets his rest and takes his medication. Vicky, Vicky, you have my word. Asa is going to be my number one priority. Good. Okay, Mom, we're ready. Okay. I'm going to leave my bear here with Kim. You're leaving Fitzpatrick here? Wow. What do you think, Kim? Is that going to be too much of a burden for you? Not at all. Every time I see Joey's bear, I'll be thinking of all the fun you were having at the cabin. Well, turn to it. Okay, you heard it, troops. You got your marching orders, and uh, you gentlemen, you will have fun up there. Okay, Uncle Bo. We'll do our best. All right, fall <laughs> out. Okie doke, let's get started. We're off on our mountain adventure. You know, Buchanan City isn't such a terrible place. Well, it's not that I don't like Buchanan City. My name is Buchanan, isn't it? Blaze, it all comes down to family. I just know that I gotta do everything I can to get back to my family. You know, every time you start to talk about family, you back off. How come? It's not that easy to explain. Well, family's family, Clint. I mean, is there a wife waiting for you back where you come from? Yes, there is. Her name is Victoria. Victoria? Like the Queen of England, huh? Yes. And she is a queen, too. I mean, if there ever was a, a queen, Vicky's a queen. And we got three beautiful children. Four, if you count my grown son, Court. Four children, one grown, and a wife who's a queen. What are you doing here, man? I mean, they didn't pack up and move out on you, did they? No, no, no. It wasn't anything like that. Well, then how is it? I mean, I don't mean to pry or anything, but I would like to try and understand all this. I appreciate that, Blaze. I really do. Well, the truth is... The truth is, talking about it doesn't help. I just know I have to do everything I can to get back to it. If letting Ginny Fletcher slip through my fingers hasn't ruined my chance of that altogether. Oh, man, you get stranger by the minute. What on earth does that sweet little spinster have to do with your finding your way back to hearth and home? I don't mean to be rude, but I just got through telling you that talking about it doesn't help. In other words, butt out, right? Well, that's not exactly what... No, 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 that's all right. I can, I can take a hint. But... I do wish you luck, Clint Buchanan. I think that you're really going to need it.
No. It's fading, just like Cord's photo was before I got Cody together with me. Now the same thing is happening to Vicky. My God, does that mean that if I lose Ginny, Vicky and the family will cease to exist? Now hold still All so right. I can tie your rope, Brother Maximilian. Why don't you tell me some more about this door? Well, it's heavy, some kind of really heavy metal, and the Mother Superior always keeps it locked. But my intuition tells me that Milagro was behind that door. Tina, we can't go sneaking into the Mother Superior's office and picking the lock on our door just based on your intuition. Well, I've checked every other inch of this whole convent. It's our only hope. All right, I'll find some way to do it. Maybe Brother Maximilian is capable of miracles, too. There's the Mother Superior. She's going to come up here. Quick, over here. What? Here we are. You see, it's just a lot of uh, gears and wheels uh, to me, Signore. Uh, but the clock means everything for those who love our convent. Uh, please, how long to fix? Uh, three, two days. Three days. Three giorni. Three. Come è possibile? You must be patient, Mother. Uh, such a rare... Uh, all clock requires all our skill and concentration. You see, Mother, the work is so delicate that we cannot have that giant looking over us. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you worry about the piccolino. I make sure that he will not cause you any trouble. Believe me, you will have complete private and, and to fix the clock until you finish, okay? Bless you, Mother. Come, Hugo. Let's begin our sacred assignment. I will leave you to it. In God be with you. And with you, Mother. What are we waiting for? Look, you look around the rest of the tower. I look around here. The statue must be close by. Hugo! You fine? Bello. I'm asking you, is this a beautiful bambino or no? Ah, uh, beautiful does not do it justice, my friend. Once we sell this to our contact in town, we'll be rich beyond our wildest dream. Oh, the legend say the statue can work wonders. Now I know it's true. But Hugo, it was easy to find. But how are we going to get it out of the convent without being seen? You worry too much, Nazaro. We got in and we get out. Oh, see, but in one piece, you see the giant that's guarding? He and his sister are going to be suspicious of any large object we try to remove. They would be if they were not too busy putting out the fire. What fire? The fire we're going to set in a mother superior's office. I don't like it, Hugo. <laughs> but if somebody gets hurt, huh? You didn't say nothing about that. Relax. I will burn some uh, paper, some little sticks of furniture, nothing more. When the sisters and their guardian are distracted, we will calmly slip out with our little bambino. What about my little bambino? Shh! What, you heard what they said that fire could Tina, kill my for baby? For God's sake! You there! Step out with your hands above your head. I have a gun, and I will not hesitate to use. Come out of there now! to ask for your permission so I can go into business. That ranch is ours, and this marriage is ours. Now, either we work on it together or we don't. It's not going to work if you are here and I'm somewhere else. The 50000 is mine as part of my father's estate. Why do you want me to give up an opportunity of a lifetime? That's what I thought we were trying to build. A life, a home, a lifetime. Steve, I want the same thing you do. Why do you think I'm working overtime now? We're supposed to get on a plane and go back to the ranch tonight, right? Yeah, well, that was the plan. It still is. Darling, the harder I work now, don't you see? The sooner I'll be able to move the entire company to Arizona. Then I won't have to fly back and forth between the two places so much. That is what you want, isn't it? I want you to be happy. But I want a ranch and me and Elle to do it, not some business on the side. It is not a business on the side. My work means as much to me as your work means to you. 
Okay, we are ready for another round. Oh, Steve, hi. How nice to see you. Gabriella didn't tell us that you'd be, be joining us. Joining you? Joining you for what? Well, the ladies are planning a day of shopping. She said she needed some stuff for the trip. That is all right with you, isn't it? I do have your permission to buy a scarf and gloves, don't I? Oh, I think we better go find your daddy, Sweetie. Yeah, I'll save you the trouble, Wanda. Daddy! <laughs> so, how is your shopping? <laughs> you and Aunt Wanda buy out the stores? I got a bracelet. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, well, we didn't exactly dent the charge card, but I do think that we should make ready to hit the pavements. You ready? Yes. Uh-huh. Rafe, thank you so much for the files. I'll be back to pick them up later. Steve? Mwah, have fun, pumpkin. Oh, okay, <laughs> let us go make war on the store. Have fun. All right. Amazing how she's thrown herself into the work, isn't it? Yeah, amazing. Steve, you can tell me it's none of my business, but it was hard not to notice the tension just now. I hope I didn't cause a big problem by selling her the company. It's not your fault, Rafe. Gabrielle's need to have this business is part of a bigger problem that we've been facing for a while. Well, it doesn't have to be part of the problem. It could be the solution. Look, Rafe, I know you just want to well, help, Well, listen, I've but... stuck my neck out this far. Let me finish, all right? Delilah and I were having trouble adjusting to our separate careers. And then one day in the middle of a fight, we just stopped. We decided that we'd learn about what the other one did. And not just learn, but care, too. What happened? Oh, changed everything. All of a sudden, we had, had new things to talk about. She shared her day, her dreams, her frustrations. I shared mine. Our careers brought us closer together instead of creating distance. So you think that the same thing could happen for Gabrielle and me? It's worth a shot, buddy, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I could start sharing in my wife's career by organizing some of these files, huh? There you go. That's a great idea. Listen, I got to take off. You're welcome to stay here as long as you want. Now, if I don't see you before you go, you have a safe flight home, okay, Steve? All right. Thanks, Rafe. Sure. Hey, maybe with your help, we'll make this thing work. Some wrong, Clint? Uh, no, just the same thing that's been wrong for some time. I just know that I got to uh, try and track down Jenny before she gets too far out of town. Well, then go to it. And when you find her, I'll wish you'd tell me why she means so much to you. Well, you might say she means the whole world to me. My whole world. Wish me luck. Jenny! Jenny! Oh, God, you are no, it. Set me down! Please! I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just that... I was so worried when I heard you left town. You were? Yes, yes. And well, I'm, I'm just. Well, I'm glad you're back. I... Gracious, you left town before I did, sir. Well, that's that's right. But uh, well, now I'm back, and and you're back, and uh, and, I, and I'm glad. <gasps> Jenny, I never yes. expected to see you again. Oh. What happened to your free ride? Oh well. Those uh, people that were going to take me back east, they... Uh, I realized once once we left, they, they were really much too kind, you see. They were desperately short of provisions and money and everything else they needed to complete the trip. And having me along was really only an added burden. Well, you got out of the buckboard and hoofed it back here? No. <laughs> no, no, I gave them money in return for bringing me back here, you see. I can certainly wait for the next scheduled stagecoach. Well, that is darn nice of you, Jenny. I wish other folks would be as considerate of other people's feelings. Well, uh, uh, now, that you're, now that you're back, I'd sure be pleased if you'd join me in a, a glass of sarsaparilla. You must be very thirsty from the trip. Uh, actually, I came in only to tell Blaze that I was back. I, I must get to the hotel, see if I can get my room back. Oh, Blaze can do that, can't you, Blaze? 
Well, actually, um, no, no. I was... and, and while you're at it, would you uh, uh, get something f hot for us to eat over there at the kitchen? Miss Ginny must be starving. Actually, a little lunch would not be unwelcome. There, you see. Well, go on, Blaze. Thank you. Sure. Well, come on. I'll tell you what. I was really uh, sit down. I was uh, Thank you. really worried that I wasn't going to be able to see you, that I'd lost track of you forever, and that would have been a tragedy. Oh, well, I hardly think a tragedy. No, 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 no. Take my word for it. It would have been a tragedy. But uh, the thing is, now you, you're back, and, uh, well, all I can say is I have never been happier to see any one person in all my born days. Teacher of ten-year-olds, professional spinster, non pare. Why should you be interested in my life story? Miss Fletcher, you would be amazed at how one life can affect so many lives and change them forever. You're quite certain this would not be boring for you? Boring? Not even a little bit. Now, all I know so far is that you uh, you left your job and your your home in San Francisco, and you're on your way back to your roots in St. Louis. Mm -hmm got to be more to your to your life to your saga than that my saga your saga good heavens <laughs> well i suppose my life has possibly been as dull as many and probably even a bit lively at times <laughs> i'll bet on it go on go on well there's there's hardly much to tell we lived very modestly my mother my father and me a simple home for simple folk who had gone west to find a better life and did you find a better life? No. No, we found that life was equally as hard in California as it had been in Missouri. In fact, possibly a little harder. My mother was injured on the trip west, and she remained bedridden for the rest of her days. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. But I believe it was God's will. And so I cared for my mother, and I, uh, I also managed to get an education. Thank you. And, uh... <clears throat> Your father? Well, I believe the burden fell heaviest upon my father. He felt guilty, I suppose. That led to intemperance. Eventually, his vices caught up with him, and he passed on. Hmm. Well, I, uh, I guess you were left to care for your mother, and that can make life pretty tough on a young woman. Yes, my mother could be very demanding at times. In fact, she... The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father, and I did. And when she passed on, I felt free, finally, to leave San Francisco. Hmm. Is that the only reason that you left San Francisco? Oh, gracious place, that looks so heavy. Let me help you. That's not the reason you have to go back. It's for the woman. She's yet to learn about love. And if she doesn't, you will never see your family again. Clint? Clint? Oh, oh it looks delicious. Please, you've outdone yourself. So have you. Enjoy. Is there a particular reason that Blaze is so angry with you? With me? Uh, can't be with me. Probably, uh, she and Buck had a spat. You know how newlyweds are. I'm afraid where newlyweds are concerned, I am as ignorant as my third graders. Well, now, you know, I find that hard to believe. And how does a woman as lovely and intelligent as you go through her life without having been married? Mr. Buchanan, you're making fun of me that there's really no reason to do that. No. No, I... I'm sorry, I, I wasn't making fun of you. I, I didn't mean to embarrass you. I only meant that. Oh, that's all right. I realize you were only trying to be kind. You asked if there was another reason that I had left San Francisco. I've never told this to anyone, but I think I would like to tell it to you. I'm Brother Maximilian. I assure you, we mean you no harm. Oh, the hell we don't. You can't start a fire. You're going to hurt all sorts of innocent people. Sister, you're one strange nun. And you're going to be one of dead nun if you don't shut up. But I just... Sister, he's got a gun on us. Please do as he says. Lazzaro. Please, Lazzaro. 
Get the rope over there, tie them up. And gag them, too, especially her. You can go ahead and do that and go ahead with your plan and set the fire and everything, but you don't know what you may be destroying. Yes, the innocent lives we got here. I'm referring to the treasure. Treasure? What a treasure. Then again, if you're so evil and heartless as to steal a holy statue, you wouldn't care about protecting the treasure of the, the partisans of San Germano. Yes, sister? Oh, don't tell him, Father. Don't tell him these men are thieves, though. They, you can't tell them anymore. Oh, you must speak, brother. Oh, dear God, please forgive me for giving away this biggest secret of San Germano. But if it will save just one life, the, uh, the, uh, there's a catacomb beneath the convent. There's a secret storage room. It contains priceless treasures that the Nazis collected during the war. Uh, paintings, sculptures, priceless relics of silver and gold. Silver and gold. A brave priest was able to get them out of Berlin after the war. He put them here for safekeeping. But listen, you have the statue. It's priceless. But the treasure of the partisans is, is beyond compare. That will go beyond compare. And where is this storehouse? Oh, don't tell them, brother, please. Oh, sister, no treasure is worth one human life. <laughs> The treasure is in the catacomb. There's only one door to it, and that is in the Mother Superior's room. She has the only key. She guards it with her life. No one can ever get in. It only takes the right equipment. Lazzaro, get the explosives. And you, you will lead us to this door and to the treasure behind it. Avanti. Uh, Mother, may I have one word with you, please? After I have several words with you, you missed the noon prayers. Well, I know that's why I had to talk to you. See, I was on my way to the chapel, and then I heard these strange voices. If this is another one of your excuses, Sister Christina. No, Mother, it's the truth. I, I, I swear it is. See, I was just walking along, and I heard this noise out by the south, south wall, and then I noticed that somebody was trying to cut a passageway so they could get into the convent. What a passageway? Well, it's thieves, Mother, thieves. They, they, I'm, I'm sure they want to come here to steal the statue of the baby Jesus. Oh, no. Did you sound the alarm? No, no, I wanted to talk to you first, because you always say I have such a vivid imagination. But if what you say is true, we cannot a minute to waste. Uh, you you stay here, sister. I, I sent uh, Pico, uh, Piccolino in the, in, the, in the garden. Uh, if somebody could stop the intruders, it is easy for sure. You 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 wait. You you wait. It's all clear. Come on. Well done, Sister Fora. None, you're a good liar. Oh, just hurry, all right? Because because the mother's gonna figure out that I tricked her, and then she's gonna come back. Those kids gave you apples every morning. I'll bet you were one whale of a teacher. Well, I... Well, well, nothing. I'll just bet on it. I'll bet you were the belle of a good shepherd country day school. You are teasing me. I'm hardly a belle. Uh, I'd like to talk to some of the male teachers about that. I'll bet that every male teacher in that school noticed you. I'll bet that every red-blooded man in San Francisco noticed you. No, not at all. I, I, I never... There, there was one. Aha! I knew it. So now the lady's gonna finally get to the good stuff. Who was it? Oh. Come on. <laughs> Randolph was a very impressive gentleman. He was very tall and handsome and had a wry sense of humor. In fact, he was the only other man I ever met who thought that I was funny. That is, aside from you. Well, you're a lot more than just funny, Miss Fletcher. I'll bet he thought so, too. So you, uh, you said his name was Randolph? Yes, Randolph Lord. Lord? Mm-hmm. That's a very distinguished name. Oh, he came from a very distinguished family. They came over on the Mayflower, and they settled on both coasts and opened several businesses. Randolph runs the railroad. Mm-hmm. And this very distinguished, very handsome gentleman he was courting you, was he? Uh, but yes. Yes, I suppose you could say that. He kept asking me to join him for an evening on the town. I was then caring for my mother, and she hated for me to leave her alone at nights. Well, you were certainly entitled to one night. Yes, that's what I told her. It was for the opening night of the opera, The Magic Flute. I wanted so badly to go with Randolph. 
Did you? Yes, I did. Mother was terribly upset. You see, after my father had... After he passed away, she became very embittered towards men, and she thought that I was making a terrible mistake by going out with Randall. And leaving her alone for one night. Mother was not only selfish, she was a very sick woman. However, I followed my heart, and I went to the opera. Good for you. Yes. I bet you had a wonderful time, oh, too, didn't you? It was enchanted. The... The gowns and the, the music and the champagne. I couldn't wait to get home and tell my mother what a gentleman Randolph had been, how he was really quite different from father, really a man to be trusted. I went straight to her bedroom when I got home. I... And what? Well, I, I thought at first that she was asleep. <clears throat> and then I noticed that there was an empty bottle of pills on her bedside table. I ran for help immediately, and fortunately, we got Mother to the hospital in time to save her. But I never told her about Randolph, or the opera, or the music. And the next time that Randolph invited me, I refused. And after several more refusals, he simply stopped asking. And you punished yourself? for your mother's weakness? Why? You didn't do anything wrong. The Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, and I did, until the day that she died. What about where it says, honor thyself? Well, that's not in the Bible. Well, it damn sure ought to be. Jenny, you have got so much, so much love to give. It, it, it's a sin, a sin for you to keep it all locked up. You see, after I, I lost Randolph, I just stopped wanting to give it. And then after a while, I began to think that the love that had once been there was simply gone forever. Is it? I'm, I'm, I'm simply not sure. And what about this Lord fellow? Oh, he moved on. I'm sure he married and probably has plenty of beautiful children. He certainly deserves it. A lot of people deserve it. Clint, I thought I'd find you here. Uh, buddy, uh, Miss Fletcher and I were just having a nice, pleasant lunch. So, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. I just had to tell Clint or ask him, would you please come to the branding with me? The what, buddy? Well, every year, Buck Buchanan has this branding that happens around the springtime when he gets all in all his new cattle and horses. And it happens all this week. You'll take me, right, Clint? Well, buddy, I, I, I don't know. Is... Oh, come on, Clint. You can see your wife and kids anytime, please. Wife and kids. Married? Well, yes, Jenny, I, I was getting ready to tell you. Oh, yes, it. I'm quite sure you were. It just happened to slip your mind to mention that you had a family somewhere. No, uh, did I say something wrong? No, of, of course not. Of course you didn't, but, Ginny, uh, I have been kind of lost for a while. Oh, and, really? And in the meantime, why not smile at the prim little school teacher and lead her on with lunches and sympathy and unspoken feelings? How could you, Clint I wasn't, Buchanan? I wasn't leading you on. I was just trying to get to know you. But... Oh, really? So you could make a fool out of me? I've told you I'm a private person. I do not open my heart to just anyone. Oh, I know that. I know. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very flattered. I'm, I'm very... Uh, uh, you're flattered. I would think you're having a very good laugh at my expense. Jenny, I swear to you. My mother was right. Men cannot be trusted. You can trust me if you'll just give me a chance to explain. No, thank you. I don't wish to hear another word. In fact, I don't wish to hear from you or see you again, ever again. Jenny, Jenny, no, please. No. Jenny. Me and big now. I'm sorry, Clint. No, 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 no. It's... It's not your fault. I should have told her from the beginning. Where's Jenny? Uh, Jenny took off. But I gotta find another way to... to get to Miss Jenny Fletcher. Darling, I'm glad you waited. Oh, I can't wait to show you the boots that I picked out for you. Thanks, honey, but I already have some boots. What is wrong? Well, I just thought I'd get a little more acquainted with your business here. So you 
You've been thinking about what we discussed earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Well, darling, it's wonderful. I knew if we put our heads together, we could meet halfway, and then we'd have the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Till I found this. So you got the $50,000 from your father's estate? Steve, I can... This is a loan agreement, isn't it? For $50,000 between you and Max. Just let me explain. Just give me a chance. A chance? Damn it, Gabrielle. I've given you every chance in the world, and you lied to me. You and my lousy, stinking brother, you lied to me from the very start. This is no storeroom. Max, it's my baby. I told you we'd find it. Your baby had none. What the hell is going on? Oh, Angel. I've looked so hard for you and so far, honey. Now that I have you, I am never going to let you go. Never. What's going on? Uh, let me explain something to you, gentlemen. You've just helped this lady find her long-lost son. <sighs> you made a big mistake, sister. Or whatever you are. A fatal mistake. No. No, you can't shoot us now. Not after we found Milago. No, you can't kill us now. Hi, Grandpa. Why'd Jenny run out on you? What'd you say to upset her? It was a misunderstanding. And before I could explain it, she just took off and swore she never wanted to see me again. And she's my whole key to finding my... Forget it, she wouldn't understand what I was talking about. Well, I know this much. And that is that Miss Jenny Fletcher is a hothouse orchid. And you can't go a-treating her like the rest of... Well, like the rest of these cactus flowers around here. Well, that's for sure. And I'll keep that in mind when I see her again. <laughs> if you see her again, I best go check on her in the hotel, see how she is. Thank you, Blaze. I owe you one. Yeah. Clint, <clears throat> is it true what you started to say about Miss Jenny being your key to the future? I'm afraid so, buddy. And if Miss Jenny Fletcher doesn't learn to open her heart to love, let love inside, I could be stuck right here in the past forever. What is wrong with this picture of Clint? Looks like it's been faded in the sun. Mine looks fine, though. Cord, is that you? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I'm here in the library. Hey, girl, how you doing? <laughs> hey, long time to see. Yeah, well, I, I guess we've all been trying to keep busy since the service. Yeah. I'm glad you stopped by. Well, I wanted to come by and make sure everybody here at Land Fair is doing all right, uh, especially now that Vicky and the boys are up at the cabin for a while. Yeah. Well, we're managing. Thanks. Good. Court, how's Asa? Oh, uh, you know Asa. He, he's trying to keep a stiff upper lip all the time, trying to pretend that he's just taking all this in stride. But, but I think the loss of Clint has really hit him hard. Yeah. Well, he's lucky to have you there with him. And Vicky and the kids. Yeah. Makes me feel a lot better about... Cord, have you ever heard of Homer Danakos? You mean the Greek shipping tycoon? Yeah, of course, who hasn't? Yeah. Um, he has a daughter named Elena. Uh -huh. Apparently she was in a very serious automobile accident Ooh. and she's blind. Mr. Danakos has heard about my work with the blind and... He wants me to try and help his daughter. Wow. Why, well, I'm real sorry to hear about his daughter, but, but this is good news for you. So when is she coming to Landview? Well, that's just it. She's not coming to Landview, Cord. I'm leaving for Athens immediately. For the world for this baby please just just leave now we won't tell anyone we saw you believe you after the way you tricked us we had the perfect plot huh we dress up like repairmen we get into the tower we steal the statue and you ruined it you and your talk about the partisan treasure we leave the statue behind and follow you here for nothing it was your own greed that tricked you there's a treasure here you idiots a 
bigger treasure, this baby right here, than anything you ever dreamed of. Basta. You have your little treasure. Enjoy it while you can. You couldn't harm a little baby. You can't be that heartless. Save your breath, Tina. Anybody that steals a statue of the baby Jesus is right up there with Jack the Ripper. We may not want to kill a mother and a child, but I would have no problem with shooting you. No, don't hurt him. That's right, Tina. Don't worry. They're not going to shoot. If they shoot us, they leave empty-handed. You're forgetting the statue. We can always go back to the tower and get it. You're forgetting a chap named Piccolino. He's right, Lazaro. We must find a way to get past the giant. We know a way, don't we, Tina? What? Yes, we do. I'm Piccolino's friend. In fact, you might say I'm his only friend in the whole world. So what? So if you want to get out of this convent with that statue, then Max and I are going to have to go and convince Piccolino to let you go. And how do we know that you won't get this Piccolino to, to turn on us? You've got a gun. Do you really think that I would risk my child's life for some stupid statue? Oh, God. Max, I'm so frightened. Shh, shh. We've been in worse scrapes than this. You just look at this shiny little face here. Look how he's smiling. Who knows? All right. We do it your way, but just because I have a soft spot for babies, don't think I won't use this. In other words, no tricks. We talk to Piccolino, we get this statue, and we're gone. Now, move! Sister Christine, Mother Ryan, the must have been Mama, Ryan, you're not going anywhere. What is happening? What do you want? Well, uh, don't you have anything to say about that? Well, I'm not really sure what I should say. I mean, I know that you are this, this wonderful therapist. I mean, that's why you've come here, uh, so you could take care of Clint. And now Clint's not here any longer, and you need to go out there and find other people to work with. Well, I know I have to get back to my work, but is that your only reaction? I mean, is that all you have to say about it? Well, I, I think it's a wonderful honor that, that this rich and powerful man, this Homer Danakos, has decided to fly you out to Athens to take care of his daughter like that. I, I mean, you're going to be able to work, which is what you love to do, and you're also probably going to learn a hell of a lot, too. Well, I don't have to go all the way to Athens to, to learn something. So are you saying maybe you don't want to take this job? No, I... I mean, it's an, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Okay, then... Why keep questioning it? I mean, go, work, have a great time, and, uh, I don't know, I don't think I can pilot any higher or deeper. I'm sorry? I, I'm, the truth is, I don't care whether I'm being selfish or not. Sarah, I would like you to not take this job. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I have no right to say this, and you're probably right, I don't. No, actually, that's not what I was thinking at all. I, I didn't know that you felt so strongly. Yeah, well, I think I kind of surprised myself, too. Look, the point is, th th this whole family has gotten used to having you around all the time, and I'm doing it again. It's not the family I'm speaking for. It's, it's me I'm speaking for. I have gotten really accustomed to you, too. I've got to work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that, but aren't you working right here in Landview? Obviously, you're getting offers all the time. Why do you need to go all the way out to Greece when you could have everything you want right here? Clint, I don't understand how a woman like Miss Jenny would be your key into the future. Don't ask me. Ask Clear Eyes. Well, I tried to ask Clear Eyes. He just said, the boy must leave. The flames will be too strong for his young eyes. Well, it was a pretty strong potion. Well, tell me, were the flames all different colors like the ones I saw? Yeah, yeah. And so did Clear Eyes tell you that Miss Jenny was the only way you'd get into the future? Yes, she is. According to Clear Eyes, I can't get back to the future. I won't even have a future to go back to unless Miss Jenny learns the meaning of love. Well, she seems like a real loving soul to me. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of love. Now, most people find it real easy to love a, a little kid or a little puppy dog or a horse, you know? But it's hard for them to love a, another man or woman their own age, you know, a man or woman who can give that love back to them in a grown-up, personal way. 
Is this like what Bobby Phillips was trying to tell me about the stallion and the mare? Uh, well, I probably lack Bobby Phillips' subtlety about explaining male-female relationships, but probably something like that. You see, Miss Ginny has to find someone to love that can love her back the same way. And I thought I was going to be able to help her when I, when I found out, you know, when she finally admitted that she had had a love once before. Aha, uh -huh. now we're getting somewhere. Who's the guy? Uh, my wife's great-grandfather. Huh? A fellow named Randolph Lord. She met him in San Francisco, kind of fell for him, but her mother stood in the way. And Randolph took off for parts unknown. Oh, it's too bad. Yeah. She fell in love with him once. She could fall in love with him again, right? Well, she kind of feels that Randolph's a lost cause. What you need to give her is just some good advice. Oh, is that your expert opinion? Yeah. Well, I'm no Cupid, but I know my tomatoes. Tomatoes? Yeah. You don't grow tomatoes with just sunlight and fertilizer. Oh. You have to talk to them. Sometimes, even sing to them. Do you want me to sing to Miss Ginny Fletcher? Well, if it helps. But if you want my personal opinion, I say you go over there right now and tell her the truth. Tell her that, that she's got this destiny to marry Randolph Lord and how you, she's the only way you can go into the future. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If she didn't laugh in my face, she'd slap it. So you saw her pick up and haul out of here and swear she never wanted to see me again? Oh, I see. So now you're just giving up. Is that it? No. No, I can't do that. I can't just give up. Somehow I have to find a way for Randolph Lord and Miss Jenny Fletcher to get married. Because if they don't start having a family, then Victoria Lord Buchanan and her children will cease to exist. Here. Look at this. Look at that. Lordy Clint. Just like your son Cordero. The color's all but gone. Yes, and when the color is gone completely, my family is gone for good. Real? Uh. Can't you look at it? It's a loan agreement, and there's your signature right next to Max's. Or are you going to tell me that somebody forged your name? Well, if you stop waving in my face, I might just be able to explain. Great! I'd love to hear it. What's going to be your story this time? You found the $50,000 under a cabbage leaf, or maybe you won it in the lottery. Why do you have to be so sarcastic? How the hell do you expect me to be? You sneak around behind my back, you take money from my brother, money that's meant to take us apart. The whole idea was to help both of us. I thought by putting the money into the company, later on down the line I could pay Max back as well as keep the ranch going until we're on our own feet. Don't you see? I did it for both of us. No. What I see is what you think of me. You see me as a failure that needs to have his wife bail him out. No, it's not like that oh, at all. Oh, Gabrielle, come on. No more lies. You treated me like a child that needs to be taken care of. And what's worse, you used my brother's money to do it. To help you. I never asked you for your help. I asked you for your trust, your confidence, your love. That's what the ranch needs, Gabrielle, love. And that's what I need, too. <sighs> you, don't, you don't have an ounce of confidence in me. You don't trust my judgment, which means, bottom line, you don't even love me, do you? Vicky, I'm telling you, the last thing you need to worry about is Lanfear. Now, the house will be ready and waiting for you when you all decide to come back home. Yeah, that's right. So, look, why don't you just relax a little bit and uh, why don't you even try to have a little fun, okay? Well, good. We love you, too, and we'll talk to you soon, all right? Bye-bye. Well, I'm relieved to hear that they're doing so well. Yeah, well, considering the circumstances, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, when they get back, they're going to need some love and comfort and some understanding from everybody. Well, I'm sure that you and Asa and all their friends are going to give them all the support that they need. Ah, all their friends. Now, uh, do you or do you not fit into that category? Of course. 
You are not making this easy for me. I guess I'm not trying to. Look, uh, I'm just thinking about Vicky and the kids and, uh, and all of us. You know, you were around at a very crucial part of Clint's life. Consequently, you, you're attached to a lot of those pleasant memories. And, and if you walk out the door, well, some of those good times are going to be walking out right with you. Cord, there isn't anything that I wouldn't do for Vicky and for the rest of the family. But the Donacos family needs me, too. Oh, come on. That is just going to be another job to you. But here, well, well there's so, so much more. More of what? Of, uh, of, 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 of everything. There's a home here. You've got, you've got people who care for you, people who want only the best for you, and people, people who will miss you more than you will ever know. For a time, maybe. No, look, why don't you uh, call this guy up and just put him off for a couple of days. Take some time to think about this. Cord, I don't know what to tell you. Mr. Donacos needs an answer from me. Well, you know, people like that all the time. They snap their fingers and they expect everybody to jump, too. Maybe why don't you let this guy wait for just a little while till you decide, especially since I've got a, a personal reason for asking you to do this. You do? Yeah. Now, now don't laugh at me or anything, but the um, Press Photographers Association has nominated me for this award type thing. Cord, that is terrific. Why didn't you tell me sooner? If it would have been me, I would have been screaming it from the rooftop. Uh, well, it's, it's one of those things that, considering the circumstances, I didn't feel like getting too excited about it. Point is, Clint was going to go with me. And the way I feel now, I, I would probably just call and say I'm not coming. You have to go. Cord, Clint would be so proud of you if he knew about this. You have to go for him. Well, I've been thinking along those lines myself. And, and I thought, well, fine, Clint, you want me to go? I'm going to go. Trouble is, uh, they sent two tickets, and now I don't have anybody to go with. Cord. So I... Is this your way of inviting me? Yeah, it is. Unless, of course, you'd rather go out to some private yacht and you can see someplace and get this bronze... No, 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 no. That's not what I said. I, um, I think you're right. Mr. Donacos can wait a day or two for my answer. I accept. Oh, good. <laughs> good, I'm glad. See, it's going to mean a lot to me having uh, uh, a friend there with me. Sure. Uh, what are friends for, right? <sighs> Mother, I'm sorry I had to lie to you. It's just it was the only way I could figure out to find my baby. Your baby? Mother, I'm not Sister Christina. What? I'm Tina Roberts from Landview, Pennsylvania, and this is my son. And I'm not Brother Maximilian. My name's Max Holden. I'm Tina's fiance. Please forgive us, sister. We've been turning this planet upside down to find this baby. Oh, upside down. That's a good way to describe what I'm feeling, brother, my uh, senor, whatever you are. Enough talk. We came for the bambino. The bambino? The statue of the Christ child, mother. These men want to steal it. Oh, merciful God. But you are not the clock repairman. You, you are thieves. Well, give us mother, but these are desperate times, and they make men like us do desperate things. But, Zara, we don't have to explain. All we want is the statue. Once we have it, no one will be hurt. You, you desecrate this holy sanctuary. You, you want to steal the sacred image of our Lord. Forgive us, Mother. But, Zara, you must get understand. the rope and tie her up. But, Ugo, just tie her up. Your chair, Mother, I sit in the chair. Never. You could torture me. I will never do what you ask. Never. Mother, please, these men threaten to harm my baby. Please, please Listen do what they say. Listen to her, Mother. We mean business. For the sake of the child. Yes. Oh, Forgive me, Mother. It's not up to me, my son. May God have mercy on both of you. You have a God. We'll take the statue. Get her keys. 
And you're going to take us back to the tower to get it. What about my baby? Put him in the cradle where Mother Superior can look out for him. Her hands are tied. What if the baby starts crying or needs something? He's all right, Hugo. We can't Damn be it, please, let down here like the orders. Or would you rather I kill them all now and take the statue myself? No, no. No, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll put him in the cradle just as long as you promise that, that after we took care of